I'm not going to put it directly on the bottom. I guess I could put it right flat against it, but I'll leave it open a little bit for no particular reason. So I'm going to call this L0. And again, let's give this a surface area of A. Okay. It's in a regular room, so up here somewhere we have P atmosphere. Now, I've got to be a little bit careful here because I don't know specifically um, what values to use here. Okay, so this is a cap, right? This cap maybe has a mass of, how about this cap has a mass of Hundred grams. So I heat it up. Okay. And you know what? let's keep this straight. Let's make this full of water. The reason is we'd have to account for the air. I don't want to account for the air quite yet. So we'll just treat this as water. Thing. Okay, just put a cap on it. Now it's a loose cap, frictionless cap. Now I know this is maybe a bit contrived, but uh, I want to add work into this as well. So we'll start by indicating that cap is frictionless. It's gas tight or air tight, but moves with no friction. That's not too contrived. We have devices that are little heat engine apparatuses that when you loosen them up, there's very, very little friction. So think about this with water filling up with water. And so it's sitting at a certain, just sitting on top of water. No big deal. And as it moves up or down, it doesn't lose, it loses a significant amount of energy to friction. So I'm not completely making things up here, just so you know. It's not something you normally see. I'm not making things up. Okay? Very easy to produce. Okay, so I'm going to heat this up with heat with some energy. So Q goes in. Now, presumably, this thing is going to get to boiling point. I'm going to add heat, I'm going to heat up the liquid. So that there's a certain amount of evaporation. And when there's a certain amount of evaporation, uh, we'll make T initial 25 Celsius. And it goes to a final temperature of being pressed down, but it's still at atmospheric pressure for the most part. So a final temperature of 100 Celsius. That's not too much of a stretch. Okay. As heat is added, Water, yeah, it kind of expands, but did we kind of put to rest the fact that, with, at least with solids, and it turns true with liquids too, they don't expand very much. Not a huge amount when they're heated up or cooled down. A lot efficiently, for sure. Just large amounts of energy make just tiny, small changes. So that's, it's a negligible concern. So, some fraction of water, and let's make it. About 20%, 15%, 15%. 15% of the liquid becomes gas.
rises. Based on these parameters, how much heat gets absorbed by the liquid? Probably should define L naught and A just in case. So, okay, what's the density of water? We got to now put some. We got to we got to do the the mental math here. Nine hundred and ninety-eight. Yeah, well, it's going to be right around. I'm going to go ahead and use, because it's going to get warmer than this. Well, no, this is L0, so let's just note that density of water in its liquid form, and this would be at 20, about 20 Celsius, 9.98. And the surface area. which is the surface area of this thing, is, you know, give it a radius of 10 centimeters. Hundred over pi, or pi over 100. 10 centimeters to 0.1 meters. So, about. So first of all, what's L line? How do we get the volume? We need to take the volume of the water, and then we need to divide that by the area of its top surface. The volume is related to mass and density. So we would take mass of the water, if you divide that by the density of the water, that would be the volume, the initial volume. And then the mass times density. Mass is, or I'm sorry, density is, no, it's, it's density times volume is Am I saying that wrong? No. Uh, density is mass over volume, so volume would be mass over density. Then we have to divide this by A. So we can figure out what L naught is. So you see, I can always you can throw numbers in, or we can we can actually physically work through them. So it's basically 1 divided by 31, or 0.03, about 3 centimeters. It's not very much in that, so maybe I'm saying that wrong. So multiply this, it's density times 1,000, so 1, 2, 3, so 31 on the bottom, and the kilogram is 1, so it's not a huge amount. Which means I may or may not want to adjust that by centimeters. So what's the, what's L not work out to? About three centimeters? Point oh three meters? Give it to No, it sits on the bottom where it's like thirty one divided by five. Yeah. That'd be pretty two centimeters. This is basically one kilogram. And then we have nine, nine, eight kilograms per cubic meter. Those are the kilograms. And then we have 0 0.0314 meters squared. So two of those go away, and I'm left with units and meters. So it's one divided by 30. 
So it's only sitting about three centimeters on it. And then it's rising to five. So I don't know how to do it. Well, it's wide and flat. It's wide and flat. I could have made it more. We'll use what it is. It's fine. It may be violating some gas law here, but we'll go with it for now. Okay. okay. So what is Q net? We might use this big second half thing that I noticed here. If I wanted to get Q net, I need to first figure out how much the internal energy changes of the water. Right? We'll start with the water. So that would be the heat capacity of the water, and we'll assume that it doesn't change, and it's pretty much 4,186. It turns out it actually does change with temperature. Uh, but we'll, we'll use this as a decent approximation. Times mass of the water times delta T. So we'll assume that uh, the equivalent of this process is all the water heats up and then it evaporates, some fraction of it. Right? So we need to take this amount, first of all, then we need to add that to how much work associated with lifting this thing. And the work would be related to P atmosphere plus the pressure of the weight of the cap pushing down. So it would be M cap G divided by A, A cap. That's the total external pressure pushing down on the water. You got the atmosphere, and then you got the weight of the cap. Was divided by the area? Because it's force per unit area to get a pressure. Why are you looking right at me? Oh, I thought you said, <laughs> why is it? Uh, I am sorry. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, thought I heard your point. Then we have times delta D. Which, by the way, we could write delta D in terms of A cap. Delta L. Reasonable. And when in doubt, if you can simplify before doing the calculations, yeah, I like this, probably better. And then we have to add to that 0.15, right, there's your 15%, times, uh, I'm going to do it in two steps here. I'm going to do it one step. So the mass of the water that undergoes phase change times the latent heat of fusion because it's this fraction evaporates. I'm going to add these up, bare minimum. Let's figure out what the heat is. Well, now we can start putting some numbers in. Heat capacity for water. This is probably one, you know, I'm not big on memorizing, as you guys know, per se, but Probably a good one just if you know, like the density of water, good idea to keep in mind that the heat capacity of water is about 4,200. 4,186. Because it's related to how a calorie and a joule are, uh, how they compare its energy units. So we have kilogram Kelvin, and we have one kilogram of mass. Then it goes this temperature change. And the temperature change is uh, 25 Celsius or 25 Kelvin. Celsius, Kelvin mean the same thing when it's a temperature change. Because the Celsius temperatures, for the Kelvin temperatures, you, you add 273 to both of them, which means that you subtract 273 and you take the difference from the added. 75. 75. We're going for 25. Is it 75? Oh, I'm sorry, 75. I'm right now looking at the 25. Okay, then we have, we have to add to this. Now we've got two parts here, so we've got to figure out the best way to deal with that. Um, I don't know if we want to cancel that piece out and keep P times atmosphere, but um, maybe I'll do it this way. 1.01. .01 times fifth, I'm going to run out of space, um, newtons per meter squared. And I'm going to multiply this 
this by the area of the cat. We're going to multiply that by 0 0.05 meters. This is the, the work against the atmosphere to lift. Now, for the other <coughs> one, I'm just going to ignore that altogether, that area portion. I'm sorry I wrote this uh, extended out like this. I can get rid of this <coughs> this one. So I can add to this, then. This point is just now adding up all these doing the math here. We've got 0 0.01 or 0 0.10 kilograms times presumptively 9.8 meters per second squared times 0 0.05 meters. Is that five centimeters? So there's the work to lift this physical amount of mass. Now I have to add the amount that undergoes this phase change. Okay. And that would be 0 0.15% of one kilogram times the latent heat of fusion for water. Tell me what it is. I don't know. I have to look it up in the textbook. It's more than 4,000, I'll tell you. It's in the, I think in the 10,000s. But I don't remember what the number is. So we'll look that one up. Hopefully it's in here. If it isn't, that's why we have cell phones, right? Here we go. Latent heat of, I said fusion, I meant vaporization. For water, it is 2.256 times 10 to the 6th joules. It's 2,200 kilojoules per kilogram. So we'll write that as, I'll put this in a different color, 2.256, we'll use the whole number for now, times 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram. This is the latent heat of vaporization for water. If you need me to clarify any of these things, let me know because when you look back at your notes, they just look like numbers. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm already thinking right now. So okay. this guy here, this guy. That that's fine. Earlier when you knocked out this uh, area of the cap, mm -hmm. you, rather you than do this Wait. division and then multiply by that value. I mean, I know we do that. Th e take your pick either way. I so just you have to multiply the P atmosphere times volume change. And I did that one. P atmosphere times volume change. But then for the other one, I just said, well, I can just take Mg, multiply by delta L. Because okay. otherwise, I would divide this by A. And if you like, let's put that in here for now. I'm not going to put the value in. But let's say that's A cap. Then got to take all of this and divide it by A cap. How about that? So you can see where it goes away. When you look back at it, you'll understand where it goes away. Yeah, I just got lost in all these numbers. Should I put a, I don't want to put the value in there, I'm not going to have enough room. Is it LF or LV? It's LV. Did I put LF again? I've got latent heat diffusion on my brain here for some reason. Yeah. And this, of course, is different than the L that is the change in this thing. It's linear thermal expansion. So you can do that calculation and tell me how much heat would be necessary to lift this thing up. So do that and then let's take a break and we'll come back and we'll see what the efficiency of this thing was to physically do this. I also want to do something else with this. But, uh, so I don't have my calculator, I don't want to put all that in there. But bottom line. might be to look at the heats separately and then add them together at the end. Instead of put them all in one long list like this, we might say, let's calculate this and let's get the change in internal energy.
when numbered. And then do the same thing for the work, and then for the change of phase, and then add them all together, if you will. I want to make sure that this gives you some foundation for it. So we might, we might do this. U delta T equals, we get that number. The work, we want to calculate it because of the volume change. The P atmosphere times area times delta L plus the weight of it. And then we have Q associated with the phase change. And that's a number. And then we add them all up. net is just the sum of all of them. So maybe it's easier to think of it as in a tabular form so you don't get lost in individual pieces. It's too easy to make a math error. And if you do it this way, by the way, you can actually see where all the heat goes, too. Which is kind of cool, I guess. Give or take. Plus this little difference, so that's going to be about 9.8 times 0.05. So that's a small 0.05. You got to do all that get this thing to lift. So this ends up being like 159. This is this is negligible, I think, to this. Double check that for me. And so when we add these up, we get about 6.4, 6.5. Yeah, 6.5. 6.5. And so these are all pretty close, times 10 to the fifth joules. Now when we look back and think about it, all of that work really pretty much this is about all we accomplished, right? We're lifting 50 grams, um, or I'm sorry, um, 100 grams, 5 centimeters. And of course, you are pushing against the atmosphere. But really, if you were thinking about what the output of this might be, it's basically that. That's the only mechanical thing that's changing, that's being pushed on. Right? The area is pushing out of the way. Not very efficient. Okay, so take a break. I know we're my break and we have a very short last segment, but I know we've got about at least five minutes of deep discussion. So I want to add one little piece to this and what we might adjust this and get a better sense of that. We'll see what
so I put the check mark. I said, Oops, sorry. I was like, did I do that? No, you did. Out. I was looking at the first one for some reason. I just looked at it twice, and I was going to say, what the hell? It was all good. Can you have all your pencil? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I won't get it. Right. <laughs>